old fears are still valid. I hold you only when I think too clearly. I was told I have a bright future ahead of me, but I think it's now or I'm using it all up. The school teacher disallowed my etnies and since then I've had a personal vendetta. The receiving end of it is myself. Sabotage is just a Beastie Boys song. It has no repercussions. Not like you two's I'll go crazy if I don't go crazy tonight. In my dreams you comment on my slouch. I have to put the word platitudes in here somewhere or I'm boring myself. You sick litter box. Stinky dog bin. half ass daffodil. Hair gel smell from the new leaves. There's cotton discharge on the fumes. The blood of my sister in the flume. I don't have a Mercedes childhood and poor Tom's a cokehead. Where's my text from the office of the dead? There is an open bit of land from where the estuary is torn apart. How can a landscape change to reflect so suddenly the breaking of a person, its bread? The earth is drier than it was. One digger is staccato. Glances are exchanged like fish. The birds are bloated with plastic. Glances between my parents switch into the river and remain there. A washing machine tumbles down the hillside and it isn't representative. This is where they dump the household waste. There was no council to decide, but there's much to administrate. There is still skin on the black asphalt. Cotton panties hem your thigh. Loud and little like the shouting of a child. Cotton ferns hem the fence. What's that light on the horizon? The one we always head to. Bus station, flatlands, LED cloud. Texaco. Early Harbour. The horizon is a line white flare. Boats lead in over the flat as though on a conveyor belt. Fish garble in the filaments of rope, whacking metronomic with that unblinking dial eye, rapidly drying to a firm gel. I imagine being cabled in the base of the net, slapping madly for what is inside me, something not yet blinking or rhythmic, but locked in, laying low. The firm, acrid hospital seat is the burnt orange of the rough wire. I steer you too early, unnecessary creature. Fish, fish heave, the sea heaves. I meet out the likeness as tidal. I write a number of poems about the small village in Cornwall where I grew up, so I'll read a, a number of those poems now from fragments. Something is flying over our VHS shop, over the key cutters and blank stones. Why is no one as terrified as me? We aim our tennis balls into the darkness. We do not know what makes the moon. We take turns with the holy remote in crepuscular front rooms. Villages mushroom up around our village. What happens? Nothing. There is no heart on the circular road. There is no heart in the car park. The roundabout beats like a palpitating throat. It is a linked and endless map built as a child's toy with its simplicity of instruction. Stop, go this way, don't go that. Goonhilly. It is 1978 and there's the woman before my mother behind that flimsy bank glass. She is called Miss Heather and is a delicately translucent clerk, rinsed out but luminous with hope. One work evening, you are to take her to that forest of satellites where the future ideas of us are mocking you from behind whacked out nuclear trees. As the evening sun greets those farcical discs, hold the small of her back and draw her gently to you, smelling lily of the valley and copper. She asks about radar and you will conclude it is dangerous and feeling the weight of a memory about to happen, you tell her so, isn't anything we can't see. Kingdom Land. This poem begins with an epigraph from Federico Garcia Lorca. At the rise of the moon, bells fade out and impassable paths appear. The dark village sits on the crooked hill there is a plot of impassable paths towards it. Impassable paths overcome with bees, the stigma that bees bring. There is a bottleneck at the base of the hive. There is an impassable knowledge that your eyebrows bring. Beside the poor library and the wicket man, there's a man who sells peacock feathers on the roundabout. They scream all night from where they are plucked. The village is slanted, full of tragedies with slate. 
I am walking towards a level crossing while someone I love is jogging into the darkness. Come away from there, I am yelling while the black dog rolls in the twilight yard. Small white socks bob into the dark like teeth in the mouth of a laughing man who walks backwards into night, throwing drinks into the air like a superstitious wife throws salt. We all have our share of certainties. The glass and salt, my petulant daughter. The glass and salt, my crooked pathway. Impassable glass and salt. Um, I wrote a number of poems about the image dump website 4chan, and I'll read three of those now. Social. The reason is probably because she started to watch all these day programs, first about Eileen Warnos and then about murderers in general, but she really loved the show called The Unthinkable, Children Who Kill and What Motivates Them. She'd tell me about the murders, the intricate planning, and aren't they heartless, as though challenging me and while ironing so the steam would fatten and cloud her face. But the other reason is probably my father, who was a library of frustrations but didn't drink. Instead, he ate arguments until his stomach bloated like a cupcake's foamy middle because he was exhausted with all of us. But once that calmed down, they went back to normal, like maybe child killers and mini strokes and modern lobotomies. But I was scarred for life. That's probably two of the reasons. Transportation. Mother says why ask and re-ask questions, but I'm so often unsure of the question asked, especially when it's the models of cars, and you must understand I had lessons for a very long time, and I still don't know the difference between one shift and another. Before traffic lights and crowd control, people used to march grinning right in front of the bonnet, straight into traffic, like how I once saw so many translucent frogs being swept downstream, glassy-eyed and knowing, towards the open, gritted mouth of a drain. Their eyes were so resigned that I even gave some a little push. The driving instructor gave me similar looks of resignation. Lorries never seem so big in stasis. I'm sorry, what was the question? And this will be my final poem about teen disco, rapid shares. Gina G was the pathway to enlightenment and adulthood. Another of the pathways was my pink faux snakeskin halter neck top that came free with a magazine and I shimmied it on. It was skinny and violently pink like someone embarrassed. Feeling older, I thought 30, and drinking too much Sprite when someone shouted from across the beery carpets that that top looks like something you'd get free from a magazine, and for some reason I was insulted, and girls that strutted and gathered like pigeons patted my back, and we puffed out our flat chests for the rest of the evening, skittering on our low heels, playing at adulthood and anger, and all around me was ooh, ah, and dee dee da da da, and a tacky smell of sweets that could have been lip gloss, or just as easily the encroaching ledge of age. Thank you.